So I'm going to click that start streaming button right there. Take it away. All right, it says we're streaming. For the record, though, I don't have the intro set up on this machine. <laughs> so we don't have an intro. We could, I mean, we could just fake it. Be like, welcome to Tech Talk. Oh, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Oh. Welcome to Tech Talk, your one stop shop for whatever, whenever we want to do it. There you go. Done. <laughs> Uh, also, too, Nick is uh, somewhere Screaming. upstairs. For the record, though, I don't have oh. the intro set up on this machine. Crap. Audio loop. <laughs> Audio loop. Sorry, guys. I forgot to mute the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I still do that every single morning. Uh, well, I, I had another window open over there. There's another There's another monitor over here off screen that you guys can't see. So, uh, anyway, we're back. CES, hiatus, and all that crap is over. We were on hiatus for two months. We like we came back. We did like two shows, and we're like, oh, holiday season. Time to go on hiatus. But uh, this is the week most podcasts are back, and uh, this is no exception. So we're at episode 151. That's a lot of episodes, Jay. Uh, I just want to call, go ahead and call out the clickbaity title. That was on purpose. Jerry and I are actually not planning on uh, sword fighting on this, although I think we'll probably have very contrasty point of views. We are not planning on fighting to the death, although it was on the table. No, no. I'm okay. ready to go right here. My box Don't got it at me. Oh, oh, you're gonna come at me with, with your little husky bat? Oh, wait, we're, oh, shit, where's bat knife? Oh, oh, come at me, bro. What are you gonna do, come scratch me. me to death? Dude, I'll give you, like, fucking tetanus. <laughs> you're gonna scratch me to death? Dude, it's all rust. There's more rust than metal visible. Uh, so, I don't know, you, you started to ask me a question before the stream went live. Shit, I don't remember what it was, man. Stream went live, I reset. Oh, is that how this works? Mm -hmm. I'll reset. All right, guys, so we got the normal hashtag going, hashtag ask tech talk if you have a question, or you can ask it in stream. Um, the stream gets a little crazy though, so yeah, I think chat chat is pretty much unmanageable on YouTube. Do you have any moderators on YouTube? I have like two. One you of them's to... one of them's Nick, and he's up there, and he he does wield that ban hammer. <laughs> Nick just so. just randomly ban people just to set an example, and you can unban them right afterwards. But just set an example. So I set up like a bot in the chat, so it's just like a random, it's just like a, a random lot. botter or a, a moderator ban hammer. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> and then you're banned for five minutes exactly <laughs> anyway uh you started to ask how things were going in vegas driving lambos yeah. and stuff that was fun the aventador is pretty quick but i'll be honest um didn't it wasn't as fast as i expected it to be i mean it wasn't scary I, i'm not surprised by that it's a pretty it's a pretty hefty car too isn't it isn't it isn't it upwards of like 3800 3800 pounds or something like that I don't it's know, but it's also V12, V12 torque and 700 horsepower. Oh, shit. I didn't realize it had 700 horsepower. That's pretty insane. Yeah. I think it's just because it's so damn stable. Did you, did, you ever, did you ever get to go for a ride in the in the Tesla, the Luda? No. The 900 horsepower? Dude, I still haven't been in anything that accelerates like that thing does, and I still don't understand how the tires can even stick to the pavement. Like, it makes no sense at all. It's voodoo magic. Yeah. doesn't have the top speed of the crazy cars, though. Like, that Lamborghini, what is that, a 218-mile-an-hour beast or some shit like that? Yeah. Quick. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I, I don't know what you guys think about the set. We are actually testing a couple of things here. So I'm streaming on the FS5 right there. Obviously, I'm on my normal workbench. I've got a very squeaky stool I'm sitting on. It's not squeaking now. Um, the, we are using the test rig to do all this. And we're testing a new capture card that we bought. This is the Elgato HD60 Pro. So it's the um, PCI Express capture card. And so far, it doesn't seem like it's laggy at all. That was That's the best part. Yeah. So. The original HD60 had some uh, rather serious issues. Some people were hitting on older USB bus and stuff. Or sorry, not older PCI boards, chipsets. Oh, okay. Uh, but the Pro, I guess, mitigated all that. Like everybody I've heard said the Pro works just fine. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it, to get the video and audio to sync, I only had to offset by yeah. 20 milliseconds or 25 milliseconds. But we, when we were trying to do the HD60 through USB, I mean, that was like a second and a half of lag. You know what's ridiculous. a joke, though? You know their uh, their cheapest capture card, the USB one called the Cam Link. It just looks like a USB thumb drive. Okay. <laughs> I've got two of them. Zero sync correction at all. I run it on morning coffee, sync to this microphone through the mixer board. I don't have to add any offset. It's almost flawlessly real time doing 1080 60 off of HDMI off of my uh, my Sony cam. Oh wow. But yet yet the four hundred dollar AVIO capture, which it can do four K granted, but if I do 1080 60 on that one, I have to delay it by almost a full quarter second. Yeah. So I'm actually pretty surprised that they're getting shit so small and so quick now. I saw a comment go by that says Jay's is bigger, referring to my camera. Well, honestly, that's because I'm having to capture his video through Skype, which is ultra compressed. So the only way to make it not look terrible is I had to shrink Jerry down a little bit smaller than me. Plus, you know, it's just my channel, so I gotta 
So if you see my camera quality, you're just going to have to come over to my cesspool of a Twitch channel because I don't stream on YouTube. Oh, that's YouTube unfortunate. YouTube streams for poor people, Jay. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Dude, last time I streamed on YouTube, I got uh, like 2,500 live viewers and the chat was just spamming other people's channels. Uh, emoji shit, just oh. dumping characters in there. I was like, where, where are these people coming from? Um, so I, I prefer being over on Twitch because they Reddit just mostly. better moderator control. They're coming from Reddit mostly. <laughs> Reddit and 4chan probably. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just get to it because w when I put that video out on Monday, was it Monday? No, Tuesday. Um, it was never intended to create this like crazy response that, that happened. So... Uh, that was just more or less a, let me, let me get this out real quick. That oh, was ahead, just ahead. more or less a, a mental purge, if you will, because that day I wanted to do another budget build and uh -huh. I realized budget builds are not, a, not really that all that possible today. Um, at least not easily. You can still find graphics cards that are not bloated, but it was, it was difficult. So from the buyer's perspective, I was just purging and I felt better making that video and here I am getting tweeted or, or text message now about just watched your mining videos. It has been nonstop coming at me. And, and I was, it was never intended to create this divide in the community because the divide is already there. I didn't create that divide. Yeah. Um, I probably did a poor job at stating my perspective on that, which is m the, the flavor of that video that I expected to come out that didn't come out very well was the giant warehouses full of data mine or, or cryptocurrency mining is what's causing the problem. Not you, yeah. not the guy that's got four GPUs sitting there doing his thing at home, making money on something he's already owned, or even went out and bought a handful of graphics cards. It's the guys that are, that are buying direct from Nvidia and buying yep. direct from AMD that are causing this. That's where my frustration lies. Not with, not with the, you know, John Doe out there doing his thing. And I think I did a bad job at explaining that part, but man, Man, oh man, is cryptocurrency now up there with politics topic? Oh yeah. Oh man, I was and and then and then Logan yesterday doing his thing, which he which he he admitted he embellished quite a bit in the whole like Jay standing on you know his self righteousness blah blah blah. He he admits that like he had he, we had a, a long conversation behind the scenes on that, and uh, he warned me that he was doing a, a response video, but he didn't warn me that he was literally going to try and like drag me behind a bus. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it after this. Well, I, that's not a fight that we need to have. We don't need to have content creators fighting each other. No. And, and that's what I told him. I said, I'm not going to participate in this for views or not. So that's my stance on that. And that's all I'll say on that. But uh, so anyway, to the clickbait title in the topic, we have very different perspectives, Jerry. That was what I tried to get out yeah. from that video. Go. You, you just, everybody should know you by now, especially your audience should know that when you get enraged, like you step it up a level. It's just what you do. It doesn't matter if you're talking about a graphics card, like in your test build that like showed up and it didn't work. It was just dead on arrival. I mean, when you get mad, you get mad. I mean, people should well, just be fucking mad, used though. to that. I wasn't mad though. I was frustrated. Well, frustrated and mad are kind of interchangeable on the internet. So, <laughs> like you, you look, you look like you're irritated and you're like, oh, you goddamn miners, I'm going to fucking kill you for stealing all my graphics cards. <laughs> like, <laughs> and the funny thing is to a certain point, I actually agree with you on that, that there is there is a serious problem with supply and demand, and the demand is at a level that gaming could never provide on its own. I will admit to that. I will admit yeah. that even if every gamer on the planet had a 1080 Ti, it's probably not gonna equate to the thirst of the crypto miners in China. They're just yeah, not. Okay. But the thing where we differ, I think, is where the problem needs to be solved. Your solution to the problem clearly from that video is cryptocurrency. Literally, they need to like raid those buildings and kill all the employees and burn them to the ground. Wow, and then, like, that's what the, that's the nuke the country. Is that really what, what you heard from your perspective? <laughs> no, I'm just oh. reading what everybody's okay. commenting on it. Oh, and by the way, thanks for throwing me under the bus on that. You're like, I'm out for the day. Barnacles will be answering all your questions today. <laughs> I thought you'd like they, that. Where did they come at me too? I thought uh, you'd like that. But, but I think the thing that we agree on definitely is there is a supply and demand issue. It is artificially increasing the cost. And a lot of people that a lot of people don't realize that this actually screws the crypto miners too. Like the crypto miners want more cards too. Everybody wants more cards out of this deal and the price is going up. Like the crypto miners don't want to pay $1,200 for like a 1080 Ti eventually. Mm -hmm. They'll never recoup that. So they're never, they're, they, they need a cheap solution too. The problem is the new cryptocurrencies that exist were created to be mined with a GPU. Now therein might lie the problem. Let's just say the problem was created in the beginning, whether, whether don't, don't let's, let's not blame anybody for it, but let's just say when they were like, you know what, 
We don't want you because the whole reason that they created like Ethereum and everything the way they did so that it can't be mined using these cheap little ASIC things like Bitcoin could. The reason that they did that was because, of course, China is just going to create a million billion fucking ASICs and sell them to everybody else for absorbent costs and then keep the cheap ones themselves, control the entire cryptocurrency market. And then it's basically not decentralized. So they still own it all. So is is the market saturation in GPUs that we're feeling s specifically Ethereum based? Yes. Yes. Not <clears throat> Bitcoin. Bitcoin I, I, had nothing to do with this. Because I thought that I thought the GPU Bitcoin mining like had kind of fallen off a while ago in terms oh, of the amount of GPUs. Years. Yeah, yeah. Literally years. Like like just to give you an idea, a a fifty dollar ASIC, like a little box with some cheap ass, you know, non UL certified electronics that'll probably burn your house down will mine faster than the fastest graphics card today by a factor of about 100 when mining Bitcoin. So there's absolutely no reason to use a GPU to Bitcoin mine. So, but the, what they wanted to do this time around is they're like, you know what? Let's create a cryptocurrency that everybody can mine. So they specifically built a cryptocurrency that is nested in memory speed and amounts of memory. And since graphics cards have the fastest memory on the planet, the GDDR5, and now we're going to the GDDR6 stuff with Samsung, um, they have the fastest memory and they're cheap for the amount of memory that they have on them comparative to them building their own little mining units and stuff over in China right now. Now, as soon as that changes and it's cheaper for them to go and build just you know boxes with memory in an FPGU or an ASIC or something inside of it, yeah, you bet the same thing's gonna happen. They're probably gonna start building out those things. They're gonna start selling them. You're gonna see pressure come off the GPU market. Or you may never actually see that happen because you have so many people that are mining on just what they have. Like for instance, my my computers here, you know, I've got a rendering farm with eight 1060s in it. I've got my two Titans in this system. I've got 980s in this one, don't laugh at me. I got 980s in my old system. Um, but all of them mine during their idle time. I have them all set up that when I'm not physically here using the computer, it's mining in between all of them, <laughs> make about $37 a day. How much load is are those under? when they're mining uh, uh on the gpu absolutely 100 percent. yeah so you have to make sure that you have the cooling like you wouldn't it, it, but the thing is is the the graphics cards themselves are responsible to thermally throttle themselves like if you stick them in a tiny little htpc case and you jam them like i did downstairs and jam them in the back corner of a components you know uh component center uh they do throttle down to way below what their potential is and the same thing applies for crypto mining except for the guys that are taking the cards and hacking the shit out of them to get them to run way above spec because they don't need them to survive for two or three or four years. And that's where the gamers get pissed in the second hand market is you have these people that are literally breaking the cards, breaking the firmwares, fucking with the drivers and everything to get the card to do more than it's supposed to. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I know you tried to get me to, to, to play around with mining in the past, but the electricity costs here really cut into that profit margin. Yeah, it, I, it, it, it would kind of make sense, but it wouldn't really in the long term. So, yeah, I mean, I, I like I like that that video brought a lot of views. It wasn't necessarily the intention. It's, I mean, I guess the title was a little bit embellished, right? It's cryptocurrency killing the game, killing PC gaming to a degree. It kind of, it kind of is it, it's, it's killing the amount of people that can get into it. I think it's first timers. It's killing yeah. off the people that can upgrade. Um, let, let, but, let's say it's just creating that supply and demand issue. That's what, the thing. It's too many people want the cards, not enough cards to go around. Economic 101, very simple. Yeah. And why so many people can't understand that. But th let's talk about the let's talk about the solution because so many people sure. I, I see on Twitter are like, well, they should just build more cards, and I, that's like saying the graphics card company is intentionally limiting their profit by intentionally not making more of them when they could. They can't right now. They are at capacity. They are at full tilt. You can only you can only make the silicon wafer so fast. You can only make make the product so fast and stay within QC margins. So then they hear people say, well, they should just go out there and build more factories. But if, you, if you're Foxconn or you're NVIDIA or you're AMD or, or Global Foundries, let's, are you going to run out and suddenly invest hundreds of billions of, or millions of dollars in creating a new factory on something that's as volatile as cryptocurrency? Let's say You'd you do that. If you did. <laughs> you would I mean, be dumb as shit. Yeah. So, th so that's not a solution. No. We have no, there, we are in a spot right now. We are, we are in an unprecedented, never explored, never experienced tech uh, junction in our future. And I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's yeah. worrisome. Uh, maybe if this sticks around, then production does ramp up and then we get, we get costs to come back down to normal, which only makes cryptocurrency more profitable because there's less adoption costs to get the graphics cards. And then there's still plenty to go around for the mainstream market. Yeah. Um, 
But but what about all of the news against uh, governments trying to ban it and this and that? I mean, so obviously the, the some of the major drop this week was because of Korea's ruling to ban cryptocurrency. Um, yeah. What's and, your response to that? Well, it, it scares a lot of people. That's why you see the market crash whenever this happens. The same thing happened in China not but a couple of months ago that caused another similar crash. It wasn't nearly on the same scale, though, for some reason. I couldn't tell you why that was. But the crash was because people get afraid and they're like, oh, governments are banning this currency. We can't use it anymore. Let's get the fuck out of it before we lose our money. How does a government ban it, first of all? They, they can't. Exactly. That's just it. The only thing that they can do is they can prevent it from being accepted for buying goods and services. They can basically say that it's illegal in our country for you to spend Bitcoin or spend Ethereum or whatever to buy something. It's not, they, uh, it's not like they can track those transactions. They can't track the transactions, number one. And number two, you can always transact it back into real money, which will then be wired from an exchange back into whatever account you want, wherever you want on the planet. And it's cold, hard cash at that point. How does it, how do taxes play in then? Uh, here's where it gets a little bit dicey. Okay, right. you can because you've got capital gains this. to worry about. You do. Uh, you either you either do it one of two ways. Either you run your own crypto wallet, uh, crypto wallet and use offshore exchanges, which conceals your money. And there's no way the government ever knows what you did. Like they could dig as deep as they fucking want. Unless you make egregious errors, they're never going to be able to find out. Or you can be like me that just doesn't want to go to federal pound me in the ass prison and use something like Coinbase, which is a domestic exchange that actually reports to the IRS and issues me an actual. Uh, what is it? The 10, not 1099. What's the one that they issue you for your dividends? On, uh, oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they basically they send me that at the end of the year and say this is how much your gains was on on your, the proceeds on your sales, and then I have to report that the IRS is, is uh, short term capital gains or long term, depending on how long I had the bitcoins. So this has nothing to do with cryptocurrency, but there's a potentially a lot of people who cashed in because because you're you're having there's two sides to this. You have the miners, the guys that are going out there and and farming these coins and 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 discovering them and solving the math equations, whatever, right? Correct. And then you have the market where people are not mining this, they're just playing the stock market. They're buying low, selling high, buying low, selling high. So you've got two yeah. sides to this. But I'm wondering how many people out there that are inexperienced with the tax sides of, of capital gains, who just cashed in millions on, you know, when the, when the Bitcoin was almost $20,000, who suddenly yeah. at the end of the year are gonna get reamed with the taxes that they're not expecting because they cashed out into regular cash through standard, you know, transactions. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering what that figure looks like, but I mean, that's totally off topic. That's I mean, from what, I, what I've seen, honestly, I'm going to say that 95% of the people out there that are fucking around in cryptocurrency, like just now, if they're watching the stream, found out for the first time, they have to give some of it to the IRS. Everybody thinks it's imaginary monopoly money and that it's no different than trading. It's magic like, internet like, money, man. Yeah, because like, do you pay taxes when you go sell your fucking gun skins from Counter Strike Go? Like, you don't pay taxes on that. <laughs> do you as pay taxes? Do you pay taxes on all those those one off uh, Craig Craigslist buy and sells? Exactly, know? exactly. You don't, you don't, you don't. Nobody does. So everybody treats cryptocurrency the same way. And if you trade it in short volume, uh, you don't really have to worry about it too much. But yeah, the government's going to notice if all of a sudden your bank account goes up by like ninety billion dollars and it was transferred to you from a company that is an exchange in cryptocurrency. Like the IRS well, is going to be able to draw that parallel and come after the you. The thing is, the thing is, if the company is on the up and up, they're going to report. They're going to report the money transfer to you to the IRS because they're going to they're going to report that as a as a as a loss or a distribution or whatever. However, yep. it's it's actually coded. And then the government's going to be trans, they're going to check the transcripts and see if you reported that money. And once you don't audit, <laughs> so Absolutely. it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Um, yeah, I kind of hate this discussion to be honest, because I truly am a devil's advocate here. I can see both sides of it. I just, I just choose, I just choose to be upset about the pricing of the market. I don't yeah. think anyone can blame me for that. Um, it's amazing how many people though are just like, really, I, I underestimate the amount of people that are super invested into this. And then, unfortunately, there's a lot of people commenting who truly don't have any idea on what's right. going on. Right. They're like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? I got a lot of that. Yeah. Your video. They're like, oh, we were unaware that this was creating a problem. And then what happens is then other people are like, they weren't on, you know, team gaming or team crypto mining until they figured out that it existed. And yeah. then their vocal friends come out and then they're like, oh, I'm just going to go join their camp. You know, it's the whole whole Democrats versus Republicans argument. Right. Are you a gamer or are you a miner? But People don't realize that most of the people that are mining today, and I'm talking about individuals, not about the corporations in China that are building the big mines and stuff, but most of us are individuals. I mean, in this room right now, I have eight GPUs in that too. And, and one, I mean, how many people have like, you know, tw 11 GPUs in their in one bedroom of their house? That's not counting the other ones. And I'm in, those are not primarily mining. They're just, they're just during idle cycles mining. I've got uh, a lot, I've got a lot over here, but I don't, I don't pretend that I bought those. I mean, it's pretty obvious that those were sent, you know, sponsored 
co- content and stuff. But yeah, but that actually kind of brings up that point where people are talking about you know the supply and demand. Like, oh, crypto miners are buying up all the GPUs and we can't get them. Well, they're they're really just buying them through the same avenue that you could, and the price is getting hiked because they know they can get it. Yeah. Right. I mean that that's that's what it's the demand of both the gamers and the cryptocurrency guys basically duking it out to the highest bidder. They were just uncontested before. And the other thing that I want to point out that a lot of people aren't taking into effect here is they're like, those cards are gaming cards. They weren't designed for anything else. You take those away from gamers, do you do them for crypto money? Okay, guys. A lot of people render. Jay has rendering machines that don't game or don't game a lot that, that are designed for video render. You use CUDA, right? Well, crypto I, uses CUDA. It uses the floating point unit and yeah. CUDA and the API. So to say that you're not allowed to run this program. But I whatever, talked about that in my video. I, I said that GPUs are being used for all sorts of things that aren't gaming, for instance, uh, professional workloads and stuff. You know, I, I specifically mentioned that. You did. My, my graphics cards spend more time making videos for me and doing my color correction and all that stuff than actually yeah. playing games, which is very, very true. Um, I guess that's a devil's advocate conversation, though, because it is. that's not creating an, an, a, a, a strain on the supply and demand either. You know, it's really not. But it's Say- a revenue stream, right? You make videos using the card to make money, right? People are just skipping the middleman. They're literally using the cards to make money. All it's eight, a, the it, GPUs in that system were paid for in four months. It is a it is a small puzzle piece to the entire to the entire. Uh, operation we have going here that makes me money yeah. it's not the thing that makes me money like it does for cryptocurrency yeah that's what i'm saying you cut out the middleman right it's you are quite literally using the thing you bought to pay for itself and that's where but, but, but like i just but like i just said though yeah. that's where i disagree with you because that's a very small portion of how i make my money doing this business it's not the thing that makes me money you Whereas, can't do it without it though you you have to have those graphics cards like even if they're a small part of your business without them you have no ability to make videos nope that's not true i could i could use i could use an iris internal <laughs> intel and take you know forever would you would you jay would you i could also well, I mine I, bitcoin on my fucking razor phone here but it ain't gonna get me very far <laughs> actually i mean i did that video showing that the the render difference in premiere versus having any cuda card it didn't matter if i ran an old 660 or new titan xp the render time was the same with any graphics card in there versus without and the one without was about a hundred percent slower so, but to be yeah. fair, we can kind of blame Adobe for that one. I mean, that isn't really the hardware. We can. If, if somebody with Resolve was having this conversation, it'd be a whole different, a whole different story. God damn it, Joel Telling, if you're watching right now, would you please hardware accelerate everything in Adobe Premiere so that we're not all forced to switch to DaVinci Resolve because I really fucking hate the timeline in DaVinci Resolve. It does hardware accelerate. It just does it to a very slow, you know, a very, <laughs> like it uses like 5% of the GPU. What, what is it? What, you you use a noise plugin, right? And Premiere, what, what noise noise plugin do you use for like reducing the noise in your video? Neat video. Yeah, see, that's what everybody uses. Neat. I, even yeah. even Joel recommended that to me. And the funny thing is, every time I use Neat video, it, it slows the render speed down by a massive magnitude on my right. system. Yet you go to DaVinci Resolve and it like slows it down by like an extra like ten minutes. Yeah, that correction the whole thing. I don't I don't use it very often because um, we don't shoot with the Atmos all that often. We actually spend most of our time now with the FS7 or even the A7. But yeah, the the noise, the plugin definitely is slow. But again, that that's Premiere. Yeah, but we're addicted. We have to use it. But 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 I guess I guess it just comes down to if you're as long as you're utilizing the graphics card for something that's within the scope of the graphics card's capability. Like for instance, CUDA. You de- you definitely don't have to use CUDA to game. They can take CUDA away from the card, and you can still game without it. Because not a lot of games utilize the CUDA API. They oh, yeah. actually just use the the DirectX the X API. Yeah. So so hey, th- you want to solve your problem? Hey, we just did. NVIDIA and ATI, take CUDA off all your gaming cards, only put them on your Quadro shit that's out of the reach of the miners. You've just solved the entire problem for everybody. And then Jay and I just have to spend fucking $5,000 to get a card that renders the same as the one that was like 800 bucks. And then, and then I guess I'm a hypocrite because I'll spend five thousand dollars on them because I need them to do my work. <laughs> exactly, I will too. I, <laughs> dude, dude, do I look like I can with, with my video production schedule? Does it look like I can afford a five thousand dollars? I do it though. I'd have to. We'd have to. No, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just offload the work to a contractor who does all my editing and let them worry about it. But then the <laughs> contract send, rate send goes it up. Send it to China, where all the mi- where all the mines are that we're bitching about. <laughs> I just get back an animated anime video of my review. <laughs> Today on Akira, motherboard unboxing. <laughs> that is very, that is insensitive, sir. Uh, I, I do particularly like your tweet, though, where you were like, well, I hope you only use gaming peripherals on your computer and only use them for gaming and not typing emails. And, you know, if you, if you really want to be super anal about that, you could also say that mechanical keyboards were never intended to be gaming keyboards. Yeah. This conversation could go a million different ways. It, it, it could, but nothing pisses me off more, Jay, is when somebody is fighting a battle. Doesn't matter what the context. Doesn't matter if it's political. Doesn't matter if it's like we're talking about graphics cards. 
when when they're fighting a battle and they don't realize that they're completely on the other side of their argument for something that is exactly the same in another category or another space. But that's because we're all invested in a certain perspective, right. and of course we have our own our own unique uh, you know circumstances that yeah that apply to us. Like and net neutrality, net neutrality, right? That's that's a that's a big thing. You know, yeah. the hell we should even talk about. You got all these companies like Comcast that are like, you know what? We're gonna charge you an extra forty bucks to watch porn the second that Ajit Pai says that we can by taking away your net neutrality. They're like, no, internet freedom. We should be able to use the internet for whatever we want if we pay for it. And Holy then they're crap. fighting the argument like, you should not mine on your graphics cards. It's like all I'm doing is getting net neutrality for my graphics card I just bought. I want to be able to use it for whatever the fuck I want. Dude, we got five thousand viewers in here. That's our biggest show yet. That's got to be by a pretty good magnitude. Usually we're sitting right around three thousand. Or so, yeah, it's big. I guess people care about this topic. You know, you, you want to know about the irony of all of this? Is I is my my. I don't want to say. I guess loyalty is the right word. I'm I'm pretty loyal to the gaming community. I really am. Uh, but I hardly play games anymore. You know. Yeah. But I but I but I I still treat a lot of what I do from the perspective yeah. of the buyer. We're in that same boat too, by the way. Even though I cryptocurrency mine, if I had to pick between one or the other, I would pick gaming over mining. So I would say the same as you, even though I don't game a whole lot, that's the camp that my heart, my heart is in. I had, I had a few people reach out to me, um, after that video and say that their entire business and their ability to pay their employees and stuff is, is because of mining. So I, that's why I made, I, I the first You're talking part, about system builders, right? No, I'm talking, no, no, I'm talking about people who've actually created a business on mining. That that oh, allows yeah. that allows their that allows their them to employ people. So they've created it like like me, right? I've, I've got people that rely on this business to succeed yep. now. They're like stockbrokers. They built it yeah. around a volatile mar market. Yep. Right, but at the same time, what frustrates me is the amount of people that just want to pick and choose little things I said out of that video and only listen yeah. to this, but not listen to this, and then you know they tune out here. So, because I specifically said in there that what I said was gamer, gamers would love for cryptocurrency to just pop and disappear and go away, but then. I specifically say, what about those people that have been, that have created livelihoods and jobs and careers based on this? What's, to be fair, what, I missed that too. So you should, I, you should go back and listen because what I else? What, because what I also said in there is what's the what is the what is the commercial and economic impact going to be of the fallout of people who have invested massive amounts of money in this? And when massive. that fails, what's the domino effect there? See, I said all that, but nobody wanted to hear that. Nobody wanted to listen to that, and that's what's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, the whole selective hearing. They, they All they wanted to hear is what they came to watch on the video, and that is either to be in one camp or the other, and not to straddle the line. So I, we'll do that. we've had donations kind of rolling in, and, and in typical fashion, guys, we don't stop and read them in real time like we used to because we want to keep the flow of the show going. But this one I had to. David Touch says, I paid $50 to tell you to suck my balls. <laughs> You know what? I, I know a lot of prostitutes, male prostitutes, that don't get paid 50 bucks to suck on balls. So I'd say you're after cream. After he's ridden a bike for 50 miles. How's that? <laughs> there's some flavor in them balls. Where, where, where in Long John's in the summer? <laughs> oh, there's some flavor in there. Flavor town. <laughs> oh, flavor country. Oh, my God. People losing their livelihood like every crash. You know, I did, say that, I did say that on Twitter, though. I said it's no different, though, than the guy that plays the stock market and puts his entire livelihood on volatile it's, stocks and loses you everything. You know what? It's day trading. It's literally day trading. I know a lot take. of crypto miners out there will be triggered that I said that. But, but I know day traders that are millionaires. As a matter of fact, one of my friends' name's Tom Hooley that I worked with at Microsoft. He was just a vendor. He was like a vendor there. He was like low low level vendor and he was just working there just to make ends meet and he was day trading during the day and the margin, which is really dangerous, if you guys don't understand that, basically he was borrowing money to invest. Yeah. If he loses it, he's screwed. So um, he was basically losing his ass the entire time I was at Microsoft. He left, just just talked to him again after like three years for the first time. His portfolio is worth over $2 million and he lives in the Ukraine just from day trading. Well, you know, that's the thing though, is you, you have to invest wisely and not not put it all in one basket and then when shit hits the fan, you gotta, you gotta endure. But it's all odds. Everything's a risk. You don't have a guarantee to wake up. Like, Jay, honestly, as successful as you are doing what you're doing, if you wake up tomorrow and YouTube's like, uh, we decided we're only going to do Jimmy Fallon. I'm just going with that whole stereotype. We're only doing Jimmy Fallon. Get the fuck off our platform. And they just close your channel and you get an email that's like, we closed your channel because you don't look like Jimmy Fallon. Um, let's say that happens. You would still recover because you diversify enough to do that. But it would be a pretty heavy blow. Now, let's say that everything else shuts down. Amazon comes back and says, fuck it. We're closing down our affiliate program, which I know that's going to happen at some point. But oh, we're doing that. All this stuff like a house of cards, we're not guaranteed anything. All we can do is go with our best bet and diversify as much as humanly possible. But let's be honest. Everybody yeah. can be out of business in a second. You know, It's just the cryptocurrency guys tend to be putting a little bit too many eggs in one basket. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's fair enough. I mean, any, any YouTuber that's, it doesn't matter if you're PewDiePie or you're the, the Logan, you know, whoever the hell they are now. Paul, yeah. Uh, they're brothers, right? Some crap. Yeah, like that. Jake, Jake and Logan, they are absolutely brothers, and their channels are equally cancer. Okay, so you got those guys, and then you've got you've got the much, the much smaller guys like myself. Yeah, um, we've all built our business on the on the on the foundation of someone else's business. Yeah, and and my goal, the moment I saw that this was turning into a career, was to create a business of my own. That if that day comes, like you're talking about, it's probably yep. a when that day comes. Let's be real. Yep. Um, that I can that I can be agile enough to just move on to something else and take an audience with me. Exactly, you know? and a lot of people don't do that. Oh, uh, the problem is we have a lot of we have we have more self-made millionaires, young millionaires than ever. Yeah, and most of them do not have the maturity to know how to properly invest their money. That's the reality of it. I mean, you've got you've got YouTubers, you've got YouTubers out there driving Lamborghinis and GTRs that are all you know custom one-offs that are like two hundred thousand dollars because yeah. they're getting this taste of success. But the thing is, they live, they live so stretched beyond their means that they rely on the tens of thousands of dollars that come in a month as their month yeah. to month, which is ridiculous. Yep. And, and I grew up dirt poor, as, as most of you know, if you've, if you've watched any of my shit over the years. I grew up dirt poor, so I kind of have this built-in trigger mechanism in the back of my head that I live so far below my means. Like every time I go get a loan for like a house, when we bought this house, they're like, oh, you're spending power. You could get two times this house at the time when I was working at Microsoft. Well, I'm right. fucking glad I didn't because Microsoft laid me off and I got thrown into this. And had I not had a buffer, I wouldn't have been able to make that transition. Like I, and even today, like if, if it wasn't for me living below my means, I would not be doing this. I'd be back at a job. I'd be forced to. Yeah. I mean, at least you had that buffer. Yeah. So. Well, it doesn't matter if you don't. Another thing too is it, it, you, you probably still get people to tell you that like your job isn't real or oh get a real job or blah, blah, blah. Even at your level. I imagine Linus even gets that shit. But the thing people don't realize is everybody works for somebody else. There, there really is nobody at the top of the food chain. It's just secular, right? Yeah. It's like there's always somebody reporting to somebody else. It's like when I get an affiliate sale through Amazon, that's Amazon feeding me. When, when an ad served on YouTube, that's YouTube feeding me. When I'm on Twitch and somebody who's watching the show is gracious enough to give me a tip or something like that, that's them directly supporting me. But they're my boss. They're my boss. They're my boss. They're my boss. There is no I am the CEO. Even though technically you are the CEO of your company, you even bow to the IRS, right? You have this company with their hand out saying, <laughs> give us money or yeah. we will end you. Don't I know? <laughs> so we all work for somebody. It doesn't matter. If you go to your job and you sit behind a desk and you program and you get a paycheck from the company, you are absolutely no different than Jay and I. We both get yeah. checks too. As a matter of fact, Jay, you are the commander of your company and you know as a business owner, you have to pay yourself. How silly does that sound? Like, oh, yeah. Like you no, think it true. should be money. You do YouTube, you send you money, you got money. You're... No, you have to actually pay yourself. The it's crazy really part weird. is I have to pay myself an amount that is that is considered in alignment with my position in the company. Yep. So for instance, I couldn't be the, the CEO and president of this corporation and pay myself a hundred dollars a week and then take distributions <laughs> on everything. That way I can have a, a lessened, you know, social security impact and all that stuff. Full disclosure, I did I did try to get that passed my bookkeeper. <laughs> no, it doesn't work, does like, it? Can I just pay myself fifteen dollars an hour so I can get the insurance? And they're like <laughs> <laughs> Well because because when it especially when you're an S Corp and it passes back through you, it does. Um, it's scrutinized. You're scrutinized as an individual and they're gonna be like, you know, you know, there's a there's a there's a there's a ratio that has to be maintained yeah. there. And the problem is like, as the business makes more and stuff, you have to pay yourself more. And as you do that, you bump up your tax brackets and everything. So the government gets more yeah. from you. So there's a lot of creative shuffling that happens when, yeah. you, when you're in this business. But this is a good transition into our next topic, which we wanna talk about, which is YouTube's new policies regarding the thousand subscribers or more. Plus- I'm actually doing a video it, on it. Here, I'm gonna pull up my Google doc. I'm doing, a, it, I'm doing a video it, on it. It's, is it 4,000 hours watched? Or 5,000? I've got six pages of bullet points. It's 4,000 hours per calendar year. And I even did the math. A lot of people are freaking out going, oh my God, 4,000 hours, that's unobtainium. Just to give you guys an idea, that's only 11 hours for, that's across your entire channel. So if you have 50 yeah. videos, total viewership for an entire 24 hour period, 11 hours or 660 minutes. And then for the people that can't do the math, it only means you need 66 people a day to watch a single 10 minute video. On your I, I love I love that you have six points of, or six pages of bullet points on that because I literally I, have nothing but my raw reaction to that, and I don't think people are going to like my reaction. Here, let let us have it. I'm cur I'm curious to see how your thinking aligns with mine. When I started this channel, I never did it to make money. Yeah, here comes self righteous Jay again. Logan, hope you're watching. Same here. Um, Same. First I never did. I didn't even know you could make money. 
when when I made a thousand, when I had a thousand subscribers, I think I had just passed something like twenty thousand views somewhere in there. I don't remember. It's yeah. hard to remember that far back. Um, it was straight up a hobby, and I can guarantee you that those that are under that threshold are not living off this income anyway. Okay, no, because the average is under a hundred dollars per calendar year. That's that's they said ninety five percent of the people were under a hundred dollars per calendar year. D divided by that many months, you're talking le what less than ten dollars a month, like eight yep. something, About eight like dollars. Eight, yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, that is not affecting anyone's bottom line of survival. When you start making enough money to actually live off this, you're so far beyond that particular threshold yeah. that it didn't impact you. I mean, okay, you might be able to buy two less coffees a month, but you are not, you, YouTube is not killing content creators. They are not killing people's livelihoods. With, I honestly feel like it's still too low. I feel like it should be much, much higher if they truly want to stop the people that are out there spam accounting and stuff. Because that's their idea with this. Yeah. Is they're trying to stop the bot accounts and the spam accounts that will automatically yep. steal videos, rip them and re-upload them and take, you know, pennies per video. But when they do yeah. it thousands at a time, they actually make money that way. Yeah, actually in my video, I'm going to talk about the whole reason why they picked specifically hours of viewerships over actual views. Because there's actually a rhyme and reason to it and it has to do with Tor and bot networks. Like yeah. you literally cannot mobilize a hundred thousand views on a video when every single bot has to literally sit there and download the video. The bandwidth requirements and everything are huge. Whereas before it just had to view the video for a yeah. millisecond and stop and that counted as a view. So here's the thing. Um, let's talk about this real quick. Midnight Madness 4x4 in chat says I was making 200 a month. If he was making 200 a month because he was getting that many views per month, he obviously exceeds the hours watched, but that he means he's, but he doesn't, if he doesn't have a thousand subscribers, something's wrong there. Yeah. How can you get that many that many views? A two hundred dollars a month probably equates to I want to I want to say it's going to be something like a hundred, maybe eighty to a hundred thousand uh, dollars views a month to make that kind of money, based on the ad block rate that people are using it, the CPM cut and all that. So if you're taking keep in home mind you're factoring that on your CPM too. When you're a new channel and a small channel, your CPM is only like two three bucks. No, I remember what mine was when I started. Yeah. So that's what I'm going off of. Yep. If you if you're able to bring in enough views to bring in $200 a month, but you don't have a thousand subscribers based on the amount of views you're getting per month. My question is, what is your content and why aren't people subscribing to you? Yeah, there, there's a gap there that doesn't make sense. I mean, as a content creator myself, this is exactly what I think of. So mm -hmm. um, YouTube is not out to destroy the new content creator. They're not out there trying to stop new channels from growing. It only behooves them to yeah. get more channels, bringing in more unique viewership, bringing them more, more revenue generation. I'm really glad that you have this point of view on it because everybody else doesn't seem to have this point of view. Like even Boogie, I mean, we love Boogie, but Bo Boogie's view is definitely for the, for the content creators. And I watched this video last night and I was like, I actually really liked this video. He touched on a really, really good points and kept people motivated and everything. But you know, he'd prefer that everybody get the same opportunity and everything, but hold on just a second. I took it one step further. And guys, I've done my research on this. I'm not knee-jerk reaction. I've got six pages of bullet points that I've painstakingly put together from hours of research, which if, if you ask Jay, that's uncharacteristic of me big time. I usually just turn on the camera and just fucking blow shit out my mouth. But anyways, <laughs> did I just say blow out my mouth? Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll skip right over that one while Jay chuckles. Um, after looking at this, I'm going to tell you guys, I mean, we don't have to go into all the detail in the bullet points, but after looking at this, I can tell you right now that YouTube has actually done all the serious small channels a huge favor. How so? This is a huge opportunity. So, okay, now think about this. Currently, YouTube has a problem where there's about a couple of hundred thousand new channels coming up every single day from these bots that literally create the channel. They download a bunch of content. They, they basically do a search, grab the top search results for that content, upload it to their channel, and then they pollute SEO. Yeah. And then they might only get like 14 hits per video or whatever before the channel ultimately gets shut down and then they so get the So the amount of channels saturating the SEO is going to go down. Correct. Correct. So, so now here's what's going to happen is every person that contacted me said, oh my God, I've been working years trying to grow my channel and I can't get more than a couple of views per video and nobody's finding my content. It's all the big guy's fault. It's all the big guy's no, fault. That's oh, no, that's terrible no, no. SEO. That, that it's actually the terrible SEO caused by the cancer. And that's why. So think of it like a garden. You guys are the flowers, the serious people creating content, but the weeds are starving you out and you can never get your head above the weeds because the weeds are just eating your lunch. They're eating your yeah. nutrients or taking everything away. So I was looking at this and I was like, hold on a second. Okay, so 4,000 hours, that's hard for the bot network to do and still remain profitable. By the time they spend all the bandwidth or they they use the bot net for that long, it, it, in the end, it doesn't become profitable to them. And that's why YouTube picked those specific numbers is to kind of coordinate with how things are happening right now. I'm not saying that the system can't be gamed and defeated, but it's much 
much harder and it's much less profitable, which means there's more advertisements to put on legitimate channels. Because right, right now it's a lottery. There's not enough ads to go around for the number of videos. Even Jay, because well, he's the, not the top one percent bucket yet. I don't think you are, anyways. At what one point three million? No, the problem is, and Linus and I talked about this a while back. Is we're we're still growing, but the problem is, so is yeah. everyone up top. So the the gap right. continues to grow. And I think I no, I'm in top. I know I'm way above top five percent. I've been above top five percent for a long time, but I'm are not you in the, the one. Are you in preferred? Because at one percent you're in preferred, where you basically get the preferred ads, and YouTube clears you to like just get like the best, the best highest CPM ads. Uh, I believe I'm preferred, but I'm also managed. So, oh, if you're a managed channel, then yeah, you probably your size would probably be preferred. Okay, I don't know to be honest. I don't even look at the AdSense. Have you had any of your videos just randomly demonetized, or do they all just stay monetized? I have not had a single video get demonetized through all this. Then you're probably in that program because basically they're trusting you. They basically put you in a thing saying that we trust this guy. We don't even have to look at it. I don't even know. I got people that do that for me. So, <laughs> right? Yes. I know you're smart. I, I, no, I don't look at it. I don't. I don't look yep. at that. So, well, let me let me let me continue on why this is this is a huge thing for small creators because now that all this cancer is going to die and it's going to die fast, guys. It's not like oh my god, these these channels are going to stick around. They're not because what's going to happen is they're not going to get the relevance. People aren't going to watch the content because they're not making any money and they're not uploading any videos. And over time, they're just going to die out. They're going to get pushed to the bottom of the pile, mm -hmm. and then YouTube will sweep them away just like they do every couple of months when you see a downturn in subscribers. That's them deleting these channels. It's usually at 1 a.m. in the night, like every Thursday at 1 a.m. It's like big it's, purge. it's exactly when they don't think anybody's sitting there just spamming Social Blade. <laughs> like, but but then you wake up in the morning, you're like, what happened? Why did I go backwards? No, my subscribers. <laughs> okay, so so think about it this way, guys. So let's say you have a new channel, you've been working or not a new channel, you've been working on it for three years and you don't meet the requirements. Well, I can tell you with reasonable certainty, unless your content absolutely is garbage, which I'm afraid there are some of you out there and wow. YouTube is literally trying to drive you off the platform at this point. 5,500 viewers now. What the heck, man? That's, what is it at? 5,500. That's crazy. We've never had so, that many viewers. So think about it this way. So those guys are all going to all gonna quit. The ones that are like, fuck this, I'm not getting my $10 a month, I'm out. I've already gotten like a dozen people say, fuck this, I'm going to Facebook, which, oh my God, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard because Facebook just steals all your content and never gives you money. And if you thought clickbait was bad on YouTube. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and Facebook actually like supports it and puts their legal team behind letting these fuckers like SoFlo just like oh, own the internet. Clickbait. So So let's say that all these guys leave the boat. You get rid of these hundreds of thousands of channels a day, and the bots just stop creating the channels because it's 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 literally costing them more money than well, it's yeah, going to. They're not making any money at it, right? So that means there's more ads to go around now. So now, if you are in the partner program, that means that you're making a higher CPM, you're getting more ads on your videos, and you're making more money for the same amount of views than you would if it wasn't there. Now you're probably thinking, but fuck, I'm I can't ever get there. I can't ever hit that bar. It's it's unobtainium for me based on your current trajectory. Well, keep in yeah. mind, your current trajectory is only the way it is because of the ecosystem. YouTube literally changed the ecosystem so that the weeds will die and the people that are passionate about creating content will stick around and that you're gonna start seeing a curve. If you watch your analytics over time and you upload on a schedule and you fill out your tags, you do your description, everything, you're gonna start seeing yourself rapidly rising where you didn't before because so many of these scam channels and, and fake channels and they're not gonna have to deal with a billion DMCA bullshit things from these channels and content matching system. YouTube's actually going to be able to focus on more content creators, sell ads for more money and get more ads on videos in the partner program, which means you're going to get to the partner program faster. And then once you're there, you're going to be making way more money than you ever would sitting stagnant because these guys just kept standing on your head. Yeah, no, so that, I, I agree because it, it's going it's, to it's going to take time for it to, to fix itself. But correct. YouTube is also to blame for this because. Remember, remember about two years ago, you and I were driving down to PDX land when the news broke and I was reading it from my phone about how they were changing the, mon the, the managed channel and how all videos were going to have to be vetted before they would be automatically monetized. I remember that. They never followed through with that. They didn't. They, they never followed through with that where they, they, what they wanted to do was push all of it onto the MCNs. The MCNs didn't want to take responsibility yep. for it. So YouTube just left the current system in place, which, uh, led to where we are today. Um, I just want to, I, I want to talk about clickbait titles real quick because everyone loves, sure. everyone loves to, to call things clickbait, right? Uh, if it got your click, suddenly it's clickbait suddenly. But what I've noticed is even mainstream media is having such a hard time competing with new media, which is honestly where we reside. Yeah. It's, it's sad when even like major news outlets use clickbait. For instance, this is a CNN title today. Things are so bad that you can't even get one dollar, dollar out of a bank here. Uh, okay, that's the title. The next one, Bill Gates made these 15 predictions in 1999, and it's scary how accurate he was. That's Business Insider. Oh my god. 
Uh, this one is this one is a site called Eat This. We ranked America's most popular chain restaurants. Number four will shock you. Is, uh, is, the, is the icon for that that thing boobs? I just want to no, know it's that. a it's a it's like a shitty looking burger. <laughs> Here's one: Michael Douglas accused of sexual harassment. <laughs> Katy Perry was arrived late to the Idol set. It's like okay, that's not really clickbait as much. It's like just. We don't need to read the article now. Grabbing his draws at that point, yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift's alleged stalker made these chilling threats. Yeah. Do, do you see what I, that was from Wonderwall? Um, it's it's almost like old media is trying to be trendy again by copying the worst trait of new media. <laughs> like, right. like absolutely, that is the okay. worst trait today that YouTube is trying to kill. Yep. Why you should switch to LED light bulbs right now? The Washington Post. I know they make it sound like it's dangerous or something if you don't. Like, yeah. oh my God, what's going to happen? Um, so I don't want to talk about all the abusive parent stuff going on in Paris, California, which is like only 20 minutes from here, by the way. Um, let's see. Flu death prompts warnings from victims' families as outbreak continues. That's Fox. That's not really a, a clickbait article. But you see what I'm saying, though? When you've got yeah. major, major news outlets using clickbait like that, I, I don't think the things... The th like, okay, this, the title of this stream was clickbait in purpose. I think even you laughed when you read it. Uh, Jay yeah, versus it's, it's ironic clickbait is what it is. I yeah. mean, we weren't trying to be serious and like get you in here just to view it. There was actually a tag I put in here because there's a lot of people that use add-ons and browser plugins like we do to see the tags on videos. You can always tell who's trying to tag things, you know, dishonestly. But I actually had a tag in there that said, doctors hate me for revealing this simple life hack that will make you lose weight and get all the hot chicks. <laughs> but it told me the tag was too long. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so now, now you, you remember back when I used to tweet? I, I went through like a whole like month where all I did was just like tweet all the words as hashtags. Yeah, and then I eventually just got yelled at by yelled at by people, and they just started everything was unsub 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 unsub, and I was like, okay, I should probably stop doing that. Yeah, I remember. But, yeah, I was I was I was basically trying to fuck with their system because all the hat if you put a hashtag before a word on any platform, you're basically creating an entry in one of their tables. Mm -hmm. in their database so you're eating up their storage and you're eating up their bandwidth every time you create a new hashtag that hasn't been used before so if you literally created a bot that just tweeted hashtag garbage 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 garbage, garbage and just ran that on thousands and thousands of accounts you'd literally cost them millions of dollars caleb says donald trump has heart disease saw that today yesterday when i was actually having this clickbait conversation with nick and my wife uh the article read something along the lines of like doctor discovers um like doctor discovers serious heart problem with donald trump and my response was yeah they found out he doesn't have one <laughs> <laughs> Burr. and anyway. this is right after his doctor the white house doctor cleared him and said that he's lit exactly one pound under being obese because they added an inch, <laughs> inch on him uh john my remote control oh geez they added an inch on to make him taller <laughs> they did he's like they're like wait a second 12 months ago he was an inch shorter why where do you get an extra inch yeah. It was just to put him one pound under being obese because he didn't want the public like thinking he was obese. So we have spent the first half of the show talking about uh, the cryptocurrency stuff, which I don't know if we necessarily put a cap on that other than there, th the future is cryptocurrency is more than likely not going anywhere. Not. You've got the amount of people that love the, the fact that it is a currency outside of the realm of big bank uh, and government control, at least as far as we know that the government can control it. Um, I, I want to talk about one more thing with that real quick. I saw a lot of people saying right. cryptocurrency is not a currency. And to that, I would call bullshit because anything bullshit. that you can spend is a currency. Yeah. Um, and, and some can even argue that it's actually more of a currency than standard fiat paper currency, because since it's decentralized, the value is global. You can't not just only go that. country and they're like, we're not going to take your dollar. Not only that, there are more Federal Reserve notes, a.k.a. the U.S. dollar in circulation than there actually is gold backing it. And that's been the, that since like the 90s or 80s or something. No, like it's been that way since like the fucking 50s, I, as Absolutely. far as I understand. Yeah. Okay. There, there, is, there, is more, there is more paper currency in circulation. So if everyone straight up called in their debt, right? Yep. They're like, hey, you owe me this much in gold. There's not enough, there's not enough precious metals or whatever is backing it anymore. Yeah. That's the crazy. Um, Vsauce. Was it Vsauce? It was either Vsauce or channel. Vice. I think it was Vsauce. Actually did a really good video about how much currency is in circulation in the world versus all the banks backing the currency and how it's something like 40 times over what's actually in existence in terms of cold, hard currency, not just the notes. So it's scary, but um, I can it see is. that aspect of the cryptocurrency. And I just want to call bullshit to everyone saying that cryptocurrency is not a real currency because if you can spend it and get something for it, trade it or barter it, it's a currency. That's true. And cryptocurrency has a direct path to converting to any other denomination. 
See, that's so, the difference. They're, they're, they're confusing the term denomination and currency. Correct. Cryptocurrency so. is just an, it's a global denomination that's literally accepted by anybody that is in cryptocurrency. Jay, not knowing we've been off the gold standard since the Nixon administration. I just said, I just said, he, we, no, he said that I was the one that said that I thought it was like eighties, <laughs> nineties. He was the one that was like back in the fifties, sixties. So anyway, people not listening again. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, the YouTube thing. So what I want to do now is I want to, I want to, I want to lift this up a little bit. I see a lot of people going, what the hell? They're supposed to talk about cryptocurrency. You're late guys. You're about 50 minutes late to this conversation. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you, we, we can talk about whatever we want now. What do you want to talk about? Well, Actually, before before we tie that up, I just want to be crystal clear that we do agree on a couple of things, just so that we don't have people coming at us thinking that we don't. What? What do we agree on? I think I think from from what I've what I've vetted during this conversation, I think we both agree that cryptocurrency, though of no blame to the people that just want to get into it and just use their graphic cards, it is causing a supply and demand issue. It is. Oh, that that, that goes it, it, without. Right. There's no debating that it's, it's right, a right. And, and, and that and that isn't going away. That that is right. going to be a constant and ongoing problem. So literally, the only way that we can see to solve this right now, if if graphics cards are still used for mining, let's just assume that that has to happen, which for doesn't look time, like that's going to change, would be for Nvidia and AMD and anybody else creating GPUs that can mine this shit to disable the features of their card that allow for the mining, aka, because which screws us, which screws a lot. It of screws people, them too. The <laughs> it does. It totally screws them. everybody. You know, this is what pisses me off is everybody's like, oh, my God, AMD and NVIDIA are for the gamer. They're trying to stop this cryptocurrency. Bullshit. No, I know a guy not. that just bought like a brick of a thousand cards like directly from NVIDIA. And that's, they were like, what I, that's what I was just going to say is I had I had some people on the inside feeding me information via email like they always do, which I never bother repeating and even saying a, a, a source not a source close to the subject not authorized to comment on the matter says i'm not going to pull that mainstream movie like a bullshit. source his name is his name is jim and uh, he works in <laughs> but let's just say i was fed a lot of information about how these how, how these manufacturers are welcoming the the removal of the middleman like the board partners and then even yep. the retailers selling direct cuz they they take more of that profit that way and they yeah. have been and they have been doing that since the beginning and the whole time and and, and the two face that goes on between we're for the gamer. We're for the gamer. We're for the gamer. And the whole time they're over here, like shuffling over to these guys. We're for the gamer. We're for the gamer. Here's you here's exposed that. What video was that that you exposed that in? Where basically they were being. I think it was like Nvidia or something. One of them no, was, it was being AM, two faced. It was AMD. It wasn't as much exposed because okay. they, they talked about it themselves. But AMD was like, we we understand mining is putting a, a strain on the on the community, and, and we are for the gamer. And then they came out with a mining bias. Yeah, yeah, they literally like modified the BIOS to make a more effective mining card because or they knew that so many miners too. Dri mining optimized drivers for Vega yeah. specifically. Yeah, and, so. and, and to be and to be fair, I if you think about it, just you have sometimes you have to put your business hat on. I have to play devil's advocate to myself all the time because I want shit to be a certain way. I want fat people to be healthy all the time and just be able to like fly and drive expensive cars and shit. But I don't fit in them. But anyways, I digress. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm just saying that if a company can sell their product and it's a guaranteed sell and they can get that money. And not having to risk lose it later, that's the avenue they're going to take no matter what. I mean, short of selling the cards to fucking terrorists that are, like, throwing them at innocent families and killing them because those heat sinks yeah. are heavy and can do damage. Al Qaeda is going to start farming bitcoins instead of opiates. Exactly. And actually, that's – you know what's funny is is there actually is truth there. And I had yeah. somebody the other day say, we need to ban crypto – you you were on that thread, weren't you? We need to ban cryptocurrency because it's being used for terrorism and drugs and all this. And I was like, how is that any different than any yeah. other paper currency that's ever been made? I think I saw that but the thing is there were so many tweets that came at me the last two days i probably read like a 20th yep. of them like one out of every 20 i actually read so cryptocurrency not going anywhere okay the the only way that we're going to solve the gpu supply demand issue and the cost issue is if the the board partners that are building these cards somehow draw a delineation which they're not going to do because they're making so much money right now and they're guaranteed to sell their product somebody was like hey you know what micro center should do like they do with the intel chips and only do like one per customer okay let me tell you the problem with that is let's say the 1080s right they have they get a shitload of 1080s in and the cryptocurrency guy comes up and he's going to buy them all at one go for that price that day he's like i want all 12,000 of your cards i'll give you a million billion dollars they're not going to just sell him one because then what happens when the gamers come in and they're buying them and then cryptocurrency crashes the next day. Nobody's buying the 1080s anymore or whatever for whatever reason. Maybe there's a better graphics card, so they're not buying them for crypto. All the gamers want them, but they're still too expensive for the gamers. Then they have to discount them until the gamers can afford them. The crypto yeah. guys aren't buying them. They've shot themselves in the foot. Of course, any reasonable business is going to buy low and sell high. 
Right. It doesn't matter what you're going to do. So and then, as, and then as soon as hard. yeah, and, and then as soon as the cost of the cards reduce, people aren't going to be that afraid for the initial investment cost to try out mining again. Exactly. So it's just going to keep doing this self-fulfilling prophecy. So in other words, stop fucking bickering and fighting and trying to place blame on gaming or actually the Bitcoin miners aren't saying the gamers are causing any kind of a problem. Although I'm sure there's one miner out there that's like, I couldn't get my hundred thousand graphics cards from my basement because that goddamn PUBG needs so much power. They're buying up all the fucking 1080s. <laughs> but, I would but, love, I would love to hear the a rant about the gamer from the cryptocurrency perspective. If you're that guy in the audience, please go make that video and tag me in a tweet. <laughs> I just yes. And then like, Jer Jerry, Jerry, Jerry can vet them and send me the good ones. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Just send them all to me. I'll vet everything because I ain't got nothing better to do, which is the sad truth. I no, you just made it sad and depressing, and I didn't even I, rip on you this show yet. I know, man. I, yeah. I actually, yeah, yeah, I just I ripped the Band-Aid off. I had to rip the Band-Aid off and do it myself because you were taking too long. I got one I got one ready to go. I saw one guy say, why is Jay's uh, window bigger than Jerry's? I decided I'm going to keep it a factor of my channel versus your channel, and the windows <laughs> will continue to change size based on that factor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you, Jerry. Oh, I know. I know. The truth is, I, I'm more I'm more invested in uh, in live streaming than YouTube videos now. But I do want to change that. I actually just got well, a new that's two different two video. different completely monsters in Massive, terms of cre yeah. creative yeah. style. Yeah, like everybody's telling me, like, oh my god, YouTube. You know, you make a living on YouTube. Fuck, I could not make a living on YouTube if I didn't diversify. The money that I'm making from YouTube right now wouldn't even pay for my house. I'm not even making enough money to pay my mortgage on my house. Not let, let alone bills, taxes, nothing. I cannot. If I didn't have to pay taxes, I still couldn't pay for my house with what I'm making from YouTube right now. And that's 700 videos, 2.2 billion hours of view time over the last year. Oh, you're gonna make me go look it up now. I haven't looked at these figures. Yeah, go 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 look at uh, if you hover. If you go into the dashboard and you ho hover over total minutes watched, it'll give you the hours. It'll break it down to hours in the little hover that pops or the little alt total, text. Total. Oh, actually, we did. Nick and I did figure this out the other day. It was something it's crazy, insane. like the amount of years. Yeah, because I get a bit of, through 2017. I averaged between one million and three million views a month. I've seen you spike up to over ten. No, I've uh, never gone any higher than like seven point nine. God, I could have swore that I was. No. I haven't monitored your shit for a while, but I thought that you did go over ten on one month. I, if I remember I it was correctly, when you did the thing with Terry. No, um, no, it's like seven point nine is what it was. If I remember correctly, I think Nick and I determined that we have over a millennia of watched hours. It's got to be. Uh, let me see. Where do I go again? That's how often I don't look at these numbers. <laughs> so, okay, so so inside of your dashboard, uh, open up uh, analytics for watch oh, time, watch time, and then set it okay. for lifetime. Lifetime. Well, do do a like, year. I did like, a year. Like the network. Oh, a year. Yeah. So so just go up there and just say like last year or last three hundred and sixty five days. Come on. So like if I open up if I open up my analytics, I'm going to say last uh, three hundred and sixty five days, and then if I hover over watch time, I have one hundred and thirty six billion three hundred and sixty one million six hundred and forty five minutes watched in twenty seventeen. Um, I don't think that's. Are you carrying the decimal point right? Wait, hold on. 100,000. Oh, that's million. Sorry, sorry. That's million. Right. <laughs> I was like, okay, pretty pie. 36 billion. Yeah, JK is like, how the fuck's that work? No, no. 100, 136 million. Sorry. 136 million, 361,654. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're just over a half billion. So 537 million, 875, 689. So if you hover the mouse over minutes. that number now, it should pop up and tell you how many years and days. Oh, that yeah. Many. Just in the last year, we have over 1,000 years. So <laughs> 1,022 years, 247 days. I don't like just I literally head around those numbers. It's just insane. Are you ready for the lifetime? Yeah. What's the lifetime? Hold on. It's still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like air, Nan. Nan. Um, damn, I didn't even know you could do this. That's, I swear to God, I never look in this. So 200. Let's be honest. I had to give you tech support for like an hour before you do the show. You don't, you don't know anything about software anymore. I don't know anything about OBS. You're, you're just a big goddamn sellout CES guy that drives Lamborghinis and bitches about Bitcoin. Pretty much. <laughs> Okay, so the lifetime has 2,452 years watched. Okay, for me, it's uh, 1,363 years. That's crazy. I mean, if you imagine the amount of people that have spent their time yeah. staring at our face, that doesn't seem like time well spent. No. No, no. <laughs> when, you, when you look at it on that scale and you're like, yeah, that literally every one of those minutes was somebody either sitting in front of it or they left a playlist going or something like that. Factor that in, but still. Doesn't make a difference to me. <laughs> yeah, a millennia, a millennia of, of viewership. It's just, it's crazy to even fathom that. Wow. So, so if you guys are thinking 4,000 hours is a hard goal to hit, just, just, just think about that. Like it, it's it, pe people just get caught up on that number and they're like, holy shit, that's way too much. That's way too much. But if you have a single 10 minute video, that's only 60 people a day watching that. And you might think that that's a crazy number, but it really isn't if you're serious about it.
and you get your shit out there and you get it tagged properly so it can be found organically. Uh, can really, I do a can I do a custom range and see how many minutes watched were my was in my first month? Yeah, yeah. How do I do, do that? Do do the drop down on lifetime and go to custom range. Maybe this isn't the right time to be doing this during the live stream, but I I honestly. No, I'm serious. I'm not no, no, I'm I think bragging. It's, it's see just this. it's a perspective. Th it's a perspective because nobody's losing their livelihood. Nobody. No, no if, you th literally if if cannot was... under four thousand hours make a livable wage. You cannot even make a kid well, mowing lawns on the remember, weekend wage. Don't forget, it's it's the additional one thousand subscribers. But I have find it hard to believe if you're if you're like that guy earlier that said you bring in two hundred dollars a month that he's going to lose now, but he doesn't have a thousand subscribers. But he has enough views to yeah. pull in two hundred dollars a month. Something is seriously wrong there. And I'm not and I'm not calling him a liar <laughs> by any stretch. I want people to know that we're not we're not calling him a liar. We're not invalidating the facts. <clears throat> Saying it's that that is an unusual up. situation. Like, Absolutely. that is a real unusual situation. I don't understand why. Because if somebody liked his content enough to watch it that much. Now, here, I'll tell you what probably happened. Because this has happened to me too, Jay. Tell, okay. tell me if, if, if you think this is what happened. He has one or two videos on his entire channel out of like 100 that went viral for some reason. Like, maybe he talked about a trending topic or he, he made a video about iPhone X when it dropped. Because everybody got a million, like, instant views on that. <clears throat> in, in that one video got shitloads of view which skyrocketed him up past the limit but nobody subscribed because it was just the one hit wonder but and it, it wasn't what they wanted and someone who has spent a lot of time studying viral videos trying to figure out how to get one himself because i still have never had a viral video right uh i can tell you right now viral videos spike and fall quickly they, do. they, they, do. they don't they don't sustain 200 dollars a month nope. and, if he, and if he was then that first month he had to have made thousands of dollars for it to sustain 200 a month in residuals. The problem is it doesn't stay relevant long enough. It doesn't. It doesn't. And the fall off is usually really dramatic as soon as whatever's being talked about goes out of scope. But then you get uh, like I've had viral videos. Now when I say viral, I'm saying like, you know, three three million views, right? Mm -hmm. For me it would be considered viral in my scope. But that's still not even close okay. to viral with some of these videos people create. My very my very first month, I, I had 15,784 watch minutes. And that was, a, that was over the course of 4,298 views. That's my first month on YouTube that was zero subscribers from a zero subscriber start that first month. Uh, I made my first thousand subscribers by December. That's three months. So it's not like it can't be done. And, and I don't know how much different it is now versus then, but I see a lot of up and comers who've come up out of nowhere and just been like, holy shit, you're killing it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's my, first... that's my perspective on it. I, 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 I got a, I got a, text message from my friend this morning on the way into the office freaking out because he's got plenty of watch hours but he doesn't have the thousand subscribers yet and so he's got to get like 240 more subscribers by whatever the date was and i told him i was like dude you i, I know how much he was making because he was telling me right yeah. it's like dude this isn't killing you this isn't hurting you you know if you're not taking an extra three dollars a month right now until no, you get that thousand subs i can be sensitive to them wanting to hit that mark though i can, i i honestly can be sensitive to even though it's not ruining the bank just the motivation behind keeping yeah. that partnership especially against the adversity of everybody else losing it i understand why he wants to do that and i'm not saying he shouldn't but Honestly, that's not hard to do if you do the right things. He just needs literally one video that gets that, that's about some trending topic that he can <clears throat> offer something unique on with a good a thumbnail. And please subscribe at the beginning of the video. Be like, if you enjoy my video on this, please hit that subscribe button. Even if like, you know, a fraction of the people hit it, he may. There's hit that nothing point. wrong with asking people to subscribe. In fact, no. it's even in the YouTube playbook. Yep. But the thing is, um, I also know for a fact that he's very inconsistent. He'll make he'll make a video every few days, and then suddenly he won't make a video for two months. So he's so he's like me basically. Am but I am you, I the friend you, you're talking about, Jay? Did I talk about you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not you. It would be a much bigger bitching conversation Got if it. that was it. Fair uh, but uh, but you know as well as I do what inconsistency does to the algorithm. Yes. It, it would favor you putting up a bunch of shitty videos one after another that that perform very poorly, than to put up a really good one every other month. Yeah, my you know. channel has the most inconsistent line. Like, if you go look at my line, even for views and for subscribers, it is just jagged as shit. And Jay, yours, yours is actually really good. Um, mine looks like the Rocky Mountains, dude. What are you talking about? It's like, oh, dude, go, look, go look at mine. I don't want mine, to. Mine, <laughs> mine, mine, mine looks like something that you could saw an arm off or cut a shark in half with. God, I don't want to look at that. It, it looks like a shattered pane because it literally drops down to almost zero at one point, like, for, for, for growth and views. Just you know, because you don't make content, people don't watch it. And YouTube is all about putting the content in front that people are most likely to watch. And not only that, 
the most likely to watch for the longest period of time. This is the thing that a lot of people don't get is, is retention. You've heard the word thrown around, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't really understand what retention means. And it's, it's, it's more than just watch time. Retention is basically how they weight your video when somebody is searching for it. They want to find the video that has the most views, the most aggregated likes and dislikes. Um, that that is a stat that I'm proud of, though. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of You're things I'm not proud of about my channel, but my retention is really high. Um, and remember the reason how being is because you do talk, you do topics that are very start to finish. Like you can't really bail out in the middle because you need to hang in there for the final verdict or the, to see what the benchmark results are or what the final build looks like. You you basically are creating content that's exactly what you should be and never give it all up first. Yeah. Don't start so, your video with a picture of your build like completed and be like, this is the computer we're going to be building today and this is exactly what it's going to look like. So my audience retention for the first year of my channel was 37% average. That's which insanely is, high. No, that's actually fairly low. Compared uh, to me, it's insanely high. <laughs> if we look at the last 30 days, yeah. my retention is 69%. 69%. 69 that is really high. Uh, which which helps the algorithm a lot too. But I wanna I wanna comment on something here. Um, I saw a lot of people responding to Caitlin who's in the chat and she said that she thinks it's more of a pride thing about being able to say that they are making, I don't know, maybe it, I think what she meant was that because they're able to make something at YouTube. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy that would be like, oh, you're gonna put this barrier in my way, then I'm gonna bust that barrier. Okay, if you're gonna tell me I can't do this because I don't have this, then I'm gonna go get that. I'm gonna go get that and more. That's the kind of drive that I have as a person. So I feel like if a lot of people took this whole doomsday policy for the small channels and use that as drive and motivation, there's nothing, there's no better motivation given to you than that. And that's exactly what I was saying before is I think if you look at it in the right light, YouTube is giving you a huge opportunity here, but they're intentionally expecting a bunch of people to bow out and the people that bow out are doing it for exactly the reason they want them to do it. Yeah. And that is because they were not creating content to be passionate, unique, or to draw and build an audience. They were building content to either get money or to make a number bigger. I didn't, maybe, I, maybe new media and YouTubers have become so mainstream now in terms of like how much money people can make up here that a lot of people use that money making as a drive. Yeah. I never did. And that's why this is all so strange to me. Uh, I, my first, my first. I think my first month on there said it was also like four dollars. I made like four dollars. <laughs> and I'll be honest, the first I, I check I got, crazy about that. the first like twenty dollar check I got, like when money started coming in, I had to be with an MCN because I could, didn't even qualify to be in like a YouTube. Yeah, hundred. Yeah. So so back then I got like twenty bucks or whatever, and I got my first twenty bucks, and I get it. Okay, I get. It. I'm like, wow, I made money doing something that I love to do. And I'm not saying anybody should not be mad that they fell out of the partner program. But what I'm saying is instead of getting really angry at YouTube and being defeatist about it, realize that if you're the person that doesn't do what the other 90% are doing and leave the platform and, and which what YouTube wants and you stick around, more you're you. going to have a huge advantage. This yeah, is literally handing you. an advantage to every single person, both in and out of the partner program, all the way up from the lowest ranks. Everybody's like, oh, the big YouTubers are killing it for everybody because they get all the money and they get all the ads. No, 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 no. That's not how YouTube works. YouTube knows that established YouTubers like Jay are going to eventually fizzle out. They're going to burn out their audience. It may be 10 years. It might be 20 years or whatever, but they will burn out their audience. They always need new creators. So they want the little guys to succeed. They just don't want every single little guy doing everything to succeed. They want to raise the bar so that the quality comes up so that the advertisers will spend more money. That's what it comes down to. I was trying to see what my audience retention was on the cryptocurrency video, but it's not yep. showing me like an actual retention percentage. It's showing me an average view duration. What'd you say your percentage view your percentage view was for lifetime? Your your oh, average for, percentage for view. Lifetime? I didn't look yeah. at lifetime. I didn't go back to that. Because I looked up what the first like year was average and yeah. I looked up what the last 30 day average was. So lifetime for me was six minutes and twenty eight seconds and a thirty three percent average. Audience retention, that's what for we life. want right there. Oh, my audience retention on that video was 67%. So that's, that's just still right in that average. Yep. What's funny though, is that there's a huge spike right at the end where people clicked to that particular number. And I'm trying to figure out why. I wonder if somebody linked something in the comments saying, hey, he said this here and they clicked there. Um, okay, hold on. And then we'll get off the stats page. I, yep. I humble brag, right? Uh, you want, no, honestly, so you want lifetime? Does yeah, this 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 is less about bragging more about showing people that honestly that 4,000 hours isn't unobtainium. It so really is. You break it down and you look at it. And the other thing too is 
for the same amount of views we're getting today, we're not getting paid the same amount of money. That always changes. Yeah. You know, you, you're not guaranteed anything. You might join the partner program after getting to 4,000 hours and the CPM might be a dollar per thousand and everybody's running ad blocker. Per and thousand monetizable. Nobody right. thinks, yeah, nobody thinks about ad blocker and all yeah. that. Okay, so average view duration for you was what for the lifetime? It was uh, six minutes and 28 seconds, I believe. See, I'm six minutes, 34 seconds. So that's the number to apply to everybody. Yep. It's amazing. Nobody's got more than six minutes of, of yep. uh, retention ability. Everyone's just you guys got watch analytics too. That's the other thing too. I know, I know you got your analytics guy, but for me, it's like, I like to go in and look at the analytics because it tells it tells some interesting information that leads you. Now, you guys know I 2017 was a bad year for me. My channel was pretty stagnant. I was right on the cusp of getting a million and I basically just like checked out. Uh, we'll get into details on that. But anyways, 2018, I'm coming back with a vengeance. But the analytics tell that exact tale that as soon as I stopped engaging and uploading videos on a more regular schedule and more videos, YouTube started devaluing me really fast. CPM. You were, making, the you were making the money, so they diverted. I was making the money, so they pushed me to the bottom pack. Even though I had 700 videos and I was still getting, you know, a million, two million, three million views a month, which is great. They were still putting me way below people that were only getting 100,000 views a month because those people were more consistent and their numbers were coming up. Yeah. And their algorithms like this person's going up, this dude's washed up and coming down. And so they start pushing you to the bottom of the pile and you start to notice that my retention went down. Uh, my uh, CPMs went down. Uh, viewership then followed right after that. Subscribership starts going down because less organic people are finding me through the search. It's it's interesting when you look at that data because it can tell you a story and it can also tell you when you're heading in the right direction. You know, if you start playing around with your thumbnails, for instance, uh, I did this not too long ago, Jay. Remember back when I was messing with all my thumbnails? Yeah. For sure. I ended up going back to random ass thumbnails, but for but sure, Li Linus, Li people yep. hate his thumbnails, but it, it, there is a there is a direct correlation between his view spikes and the thumbnails. Yep. All that matters is if you can look at a thumbnail without looking at any text or anything, even on a cell phone screen, and you can identify that you know exactly whose video that is, you are more likely to click it if you follow that person. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and I would, down. and I could probably, the sad part is I would probably get more, more clicks on videos. If I was the clickbait guy that everyone wants to say that I am, if I put my ugly face in the thumbnail every time, but you I would. don't, I just, I just do a glamor shot of the product we're talking about. It's just the way I've always liked doing it. Yep. So, no, no, and, that, and that's true. But if you, but if you did, it would I'm give just, you a boost. I'm just throwing Logan all the righteous ammunition, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> but do it. Go look at any super viral yeah. channel. If you go look at any super, like even Boogie. Like if you even go look at Boogie's channel, he's in every thumbnail. Yeah. Well, it's, because it's, every it's every thumbnail is a, every thumbnail is a screen cap. But so sure. are mine. I just screen cap the product. But 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 you know it's him. You immediately yeah. you could be fifty feet away looking at somebody's cell phone like over their shoulder on a train, and you would know that that's Boogie's video. <laughs> and brand identification is everything. Thumbnails it's, are the hardest yeah. part of the video. Not for me. For me, it's the title. For me, it's making the video. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh my god. For me, it's actually turning on the camera, like literally getting in front of it these days. Stop taking all my ammunition, man. I'm flinging them at you. Dude, it's just it's just like grade school all over again. You know, kids coming over getting ready to kick my ass, and I'm like, I know I'm fat, I eat too much. And he's like, Oh fuck. Don't hit me, I might throw up. I just ate a burger. <laughs> Don't hit me, please. Oh my god. I got my penis is small. Leave me alone. Oh, <laughs> on that note, let's go ahead and just liven this up a little bit. Let's get uh, let's, let's get some good fun funny topics. Anything on uh, Ask Tech Talk? Allow me to go and check that, good sir, once I get my mouse back from my crypto mining machine that's running at 100% and just stole it. <laughs> I see I'm Nick up there a, on his laptop and on his phone. That multitasking dude. I'm using a, a mouse uh, and keyboard sharing software. Do you ever do that? Do you have multiple computers where you want to move the mouse and keyboard between them? Yeah, I have, I have um, Synology's Synergy. Dude, you should use Input Director. Go look it up. It's a free open source software. I've, I've never found a software that even comes close to as configurable as it is. You can literally drag and drop entire files between the computers as if they're the same computer. You can do that with Synergy. Oh, you can? Okay. But, but Synergy is not free open source though. It's like, Synergy is like $9 a year or something like that. Well, that's right. Cause they moved to that whole cloud thing, right? Where, where all the computers just join in the little cloud thing and they all negotiate and figure it out. Well, they do it local. I think they might be able to do it through the cloud, but I've only done it. I've only used it locally. Yeah, this input director is just amazing. Like it's got so many little features in it. Like you can you can put do a hotkey to basically block it so that the mouse won't freely travel between the screens if you're playing a video game or something like that. Okay. Uh, you can screen cap one or two and then paste it to either machine just with the keyboard. Here, here's what we'll talk about. Someone yeah. just asked, like in all caps, when is the post Malone build coming? Okay, so if you guys remember the initial uh, video we did with the interview, he wants the build to be based around his album. His album hasn't dropped yet, guys. <laughs> so That's an idea for the case, though. If, 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 uh, if, uh, it's already it's already been handled. The case. God damn! But you got to hear my idea at least for build two. Okay, 
I think what you should do is have a bottle, a bottle of painkillers, just duct taped to the top of the case, and a and a rock can of Rockstar. Oh God! Because it's popping pillies and feeling like a rock star. I know, I get it, but that's a whole. Like, how about a yard hoe? Take a yard hoe and stick it on the top too, and like hot glue it. So it's like a yard hose. So it's like popping little pillies, feeling like a rock star, and then the hose doing doing. But the but the problem is, Rockstar is not on the album. It's it's not it's not the the beer bongs and Bentley's album. Ah shit! Well, that ain't gonna work then. See, this this is why I don't work with Post Malone and Jay does. It's the no, only reason. I, I can tell you that the the chassis has already been uh, okay. So the, he's coming back in in a couple of weeks. We'll be doing another video here where I'm gonna be revealing to him the chassis and the renders and all that for it. Remember, he Ooh. wanted to kind of be involved in the in the early level stuff. So yeah. I'm gonna give people another chance to bitch and moan that the build isn't done. <laughs> Because he's going to come back in and and kind of give me his take on the initial renderings. It's with, Terry Crews all over again. <laughs> with no, if Terry Crews was only two videos technically. This is probably going to be three. Cool. Um, but I need his album to drop though. But anyway, he's going to be coming in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to be showing him the case in person, the the yeah. way the case is normally, and then I'm going to be showing him renders of the custom one-off case that's going to be built specifically for him, where it's the only one in the world that is going to be built this way. And it is going to be badass. Trust me, it is going to make anything I have done in the past look like such garbage. Even the D-Frame 2.0 case I'm working on right now is not going to even come close to comparing to this. And I'm constantly building these levels of computers for other people than myself. But Jay, aren't you gonna, aren't you a little concerned that it, once Terry sees that, he's going to come back and be like, why did you cry on my case and give me... No, I'm just, I'm just fucking with you because everybody gave me so much shit over that. But uh, uh, yeah. how do these people find you, by the way? Like, sure. I bet you that's a question a lot of people want to ask. Like, how the fuck do you got that contrast? You got Post Malone on one side, you got Terry Crews on... I mean, kind so, of polar opposites. Well, okay, so after we did that interview, we all drove to um, Pasadena and we went to Wahoo's Fish Tacos. Okay. And because he was like, the whole time he was sitting here too, I don't know if he was high or what, but the whole time he was sitting here, he was just like, That's what he, was. he was just like, <laughs> I want Wahoos. I just really want Wahoos. And we'd be sitting here like filming, and at the end, he's like, I'm hungry. You want to go, I'm going to Wahoos. <laughs> he just kept saying it. Then he looks it up on Twitter and he was like, Man, the closest Wahoos here is in Pasadena. So I was like, Well, let's go to Wahoos. So we all just met up down there, right? That's awesome. He orders $130 worth of Wahoo fish tacos and steak. <laughs> <laughs> they bowls of steak. So anyway, um, That's awesome. the, I asked him when we were there, I said, so let me ask you, I said, how did you find my channel? Because I told him, I said, I thought you just thought I was Jay-Z in the beginning because you're a rapper, yeah. R&B, pop artist, whatever. And he was like, yeah. He goes, I have a friend that watches you. He goes, but he said, I've been watching you for like three months. And he goes, I just one day was like, I want to, the guy's cool as shit. I want to do something with him. So he does when he tweeted me. I was the one that asked him if he wanted a computer. He didn't ask for one. I was like, you want me to build your computer? He's like, sure. So just like, just like the Terry Crews build, everyone's going to get pissed yep. at him being like, why are all the rich guys get all the free stuff? I'm sponsoring it. I'm handling it, not him. Yep. So it's, it's, just, it's I, weird to discover the kinds of people that somehow are watching your stuff. Like I remember I went to Red Bull GRC three years ago. Oh, go I, ahead. I also get to see who's lurking because remember the verified tab, I can see who's followed me. Oh yeah. I can tell you I have three pro athletes, one in the NFL, one in the NBA, one in the MLB and a Harlem Globetrotter following me. So it's like, what the hell is this? Wait, 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 wait. I have a Harlem Globetrotter that just followed me like a week ago. I wonder maybe, if it's the same dude. Maybe he found me through you. I don't know. But I've got a, I've got a three major league, major um, athletes following and lurking. That's cool. I still remember when, uh, so the GRC thing three years ago, I went back, back, back when I actually used to make videos. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I went to Red Bull GRC and Connor Martell was there, one of the GRC drivers, and he just won. He just won the whole thing for lights, for GRC lights. And I was walking over to him because I was shooting a video for the YouTube channel and I wanted to like do an interview with him and he starts walking at me. Yeah. And he starts picking up speed and I'm like, whoa, whoa, uh oh. He's gotta <laughs> what, go what, beat me up. And he walks up, he's like, oh my God, Barnacles, I watch all your iRacing videos. Cause that was back when I had the simulator and I was doing like the stuff with iHUD. Right. And everything. Right. And it turns out that the, he trains on that. Like he trains on iRacing on the off season um, to keep all of his skills sharp. And he's like, yeah, no, I watched all your videos and your setup. I got a setup just like you. I got the Thrustmaster, this and everything like that. And I was just like, Holy fuck, how does this guy know me? Like, I'm a fat dude that reviews technology, and he drives race cars. Like, how did this connect? Yeah, happen? like I said, I mean... It's just, you know, it's just cool to see the people that you can reach. So, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say it that... Might, it might break, because everybody's been calling you fat, you know, lately. So I, my, hope my, my, I hope it breaks. I hope it breaks. I can't even go out one, on a trip. <laughs> one, I'd, I'd be stupid not to get involved with the celebrity builds, right? But the, the, fun, the fun part is they want to get involved with me, so it's kind of yeah. a two-way road. It's not like I'm hounding them. Um, two... Uh, I was going to say something important and now I forgot. Well, the first point was pretty powerful. 
So you know, no, there was a point I was gonna. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Terry Crews build, I think, broke a stigma. I think the Terry Crews build broke this whole like it's not cool to be a PC gamer or it's not cool to to be to want to be a nerd. There's always been that saying that world that nerds will rule the world, right? Yep. And I think I think people seeing a guy like Terry Crews who is just like a fitness fanatic. Yeah, not just a celebrity, like the opposite ends of the spectrum of right. what you you'd visualize a gamer as. So I think that that made a lot a lot of people a little bit more comfortable with coming forth and being like, oh, I'm a gamer. I mean, yeah, people have mentioned like Vin Diesel plays games and and um, uh, there's other names that people have, have told me to hit up. But I, I just think he helped break the break that that stigma and so more people are now looking into pc gaming channels and stuff and there's not a lot of us in the pc gaming realm i'd say there's probably a good 25 or 30 main channels in this genre which is not a lot in the space of youtube right so the likelihood of them following or finding someone like me is high and then of course it's up to them to just kind of poke around in the different channels and see who it is they want to work with maybe my salty real attitude makes them a little bit more comfortable approaching me i don't know Maybe they approached the other guys and they said no, and then I was last pick. Who knows? <laughs> so, whatever. No, I, th I, th I think it's cool. I, d I think that that's really cool because not only the diversity of people that are approaching, you basically have somebody who's like at the, at the head of the – like like what category of music would you call it? It's like is it rap he, kind of, but it's not really. He's not really a rapper. No, um, it's he's not. He's definitely more of a pop artist, R&B so, pop. Yeah, kind of, kind of like the R&B pop, but just a little little bit of – little tiny bit of almost rap it's not rap though but it, it feels like rap. it a little bit it's kind of that that whole culture yeah. i think it's cool that you got that on one of the spectrum he's like he's a gamer you got terry who could flip dump trucks and shit like that and he's a <laughs> funny comedian and now he's a gamer and yeah. it's like now gamers are cool i mean all of a sudden like overnight i mean you you can't say that the game the average game well you can still say the average gamer right now but anyways you know the eric carton shitting in a bucket playing warcraft mining direwolves or whatever which jay is that <laughs> hey by the way, Jay is closer to that person than I am. I yeah. hate World of Warcraft. Jay loves World of Warcraft and thinks it's the best game on earth, and I guarantee you he'd, he'd play it more than PUBG. I never, I never said it's the best game in the world, but I do play it, and I do raid, and I do have like an – it's not a super high level. We have an, an I level 947 Feral Druid that I do Heroic Throne. I mean – well, we're hey, starting Jack, heroic. I just can you, normal. Can you tell us by anyway, name? What, what mythic fifteens and sixteens are pretty easy now compared to what they used to be. But you know, it all has to do with completing your emissaries and getting a little bit better chances for loot drop. Although the new patch did just make now getting withering essences and the fact that you can actually now farm your own legendaries is actually pretty cool. Hashtag I think loser. it takes a lot of the farming aspect of the guys like me who've really worked for that stuff. Now they're just kind of handing it out to everybody. But you got to let the people catch up. <laughs> I do play a lot of Warcraft. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to ask you to name all the armor on your character, but then you just went off on like 10 times worse. <laughs> it's like, I can't even tell you in PUBG, like how to equip a weapon. That's how little I played it. That's my favorite game right now. Someone what? just said Jay is doing pet battles all day. I have never done even one pet battle. The fuck's a pet battle? <laughs> Basically, Warcraft one or Blizzard wanted to kind of cash in on the whole like Pokemon Go thing. Okay. So they came up with the pet battles where you could actually battle your pets in like a battle arena. So they literally just ripped off Pokemon. Pretty much, but then PETA got mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. They're goddamn digital. Oh, you were just joking. Okay, I was going to say they're goddamn digital creatures. What? <laughs> they mad at people like, you could tell who plays WoW in the chat. Oh, God, there he goes. <laughs> you got, you got every, everybody going on that one. I like WoW. What can I say? I, 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 just, like, I just like sitting in my chair, relaxing. I'm going to tweet out the stream one more time because apparently the first time I tweeted out, I didn't, I didn't put a URL in there. You know people are too lazy to actually click on it. <laughs> it ends in eight minutes. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, we only got eight minutes left? It's 622. Oh, okay, only, only eight minutes left. Better hurry. <laughs> Any server first? Nope. I've never been a part of a server first. I'm not a hardcore raider. I, I've only cleared uh, all of Throne through normal. The problem is the raid nights that they're doing heroics and, and mythics. Uh, raids, I'm busy doing stuff with the family. Usually I only get to play late at night. And the guild I belong to likes to raid on Tuesday mornings after server reset. I am so fucking sorry that I brought that topic up, guys. Wow, is so just, this is Jay's 3D printing, by the way. Really? Wow, is still 2002? Hey, stupid. It started in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit, though, I, I have to admit, though, that when Wow first came out for the first probably... Five or six years, I did off and on play it, and I did get one of my characters maxed out before an expansion. Has so anyone that, noticed that sort somewhere. of an exponential reduction in frames per second now in raids ever since patch 7.3.5? Like, I've noticed. See, I don't know any of that shit. 
See, I've I noticed tell. since the new patch on Tuesday, although the level league revamp is nice now that the level, you know, the zone you're in levels with you to a max level of 60, meaning you don't have to really stay on track now when you're leveling. It's very cool, but I noticed that in terms of like just overall game performance, it's actually degraded quite a bit. Oh my God. The, see, see the difference between you and me is like I just sit there and push the buttons and look at the pretties, and you, you, you've actually figured all the shit out. Like, You're a clicker. Oh my god, yeah. dude! Not, not only that, the last two, uh, no, three MMOs what? that I played. Ben Emo? Spears just said that Warframe better than WoW. Fucking Warframe? No, I, I disagree oh, with that. Man. I don't even play it. Dude, Warframe's stupid. Warframe's dumbest game ever made. Isn't Warframe that pay-to-win game? It's like on PlayStation and PC and everything. I think it is. I think it is. Well, I, I brought that on you guys. I apologize for that. Um, I pushed Jay's button and saying he went off on a tangent about World of Warcraft. I knew that was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to be that severe. You know? <laughs> yes. Are you alive? I can't. Oh, he's on wireless. So he's just walking around his studio, which is actually a pretty big I got show. hungry. I had to go get he's a new TV. He went and got food. That guy went and got food. I my cord got today. What, I do my people, binge eating right before bed. What people can't see is the fact that I have a boom mic here that's picking up the mic for the stream, but I have a wireless mic attached to me so Jerry can hear me. That's awesome. Hey, Jay, what I was going to say is the last three MMOs I played, which would be World of Warcraft, EVE Online, and uh, shit. I can't remember the name of the third that I played. Uh, shit, what was it called? Anyways, all three of them, I literally got so bored playing them and grinding that I just went and got the macro tools and just macroed it instead. I had more fun building the macros just to play the game for me than actually playing the game. ADHD, bro. Mm -hmm. ADHD. That, that's where that comes from. You know what? That's what makes a good developer is when you're so fucking ADHD that you just code everything. You automate everything because you just can't be bothered playing it. So then you become really good at automating things. And it turns mm. out that automation is a skill that every business wants these days. If you want to get into the computer business and you want to go work at a company, learn how to write automation tools or how to use pre-existing automation tools. And you, too, will be assured a job replacing other people with automation. True story. Chipmunk Jay confirmed. <laughs> I didn't shove it in my cheek. Ladies. Oh, I mean, dude, guys. The, the fake, did you see, did you see <laughs> the highly anticipated fake news awards? I was laughing when I saw that. <laughs> no. God damn it. Why do we got to have such a dumb president? Oh, my God. Sorry. I just people say stay away from politics. Nope. I, I, I'm not not even political. I'm just saying the guy's dumb. If I ran into him on the street, his two pays on just so he didn't kill himself. His two pays too tight. That's all. Yep. <laughs> anyway, in all seriousness, um, I do. I do love I do love my Warcrafts. You do. I also do love I, I, I'm going to say it. Are you ready? Yeah, do it. I also like Battlefront, too. What? I wasn't expecting that. I thought you were going to say Battlefield 4. No, I haven't played Battlefield 4 in like a year and a half. I, I'm level 4 on Battlefield 1. That's how much that bombed, is my opinion. I love Star Wars, and I love the storyline. I have played like five online matches in Battlefront, but I've played through the entire campaign on Battlefront 2, and I'm waiting for the third chapter to, to launch, or the third campaign chapter to go, or to drop. But yeah, I've, been, I've actually enjoyed it. It's, it's kind of neat. Good. Okay. It's I have it. It, it. So it takes place parallel along the movies. So it starts off. It starts off uh, with you playing parallel to the the Endor fight in Return of the Jedi. Okay. And then it goes forward to you basically going all the way through to the Battle of Jakku, which takes place between Episode Six and Episode Seven, right? Because remember when you see Episode Seven, there's already the crash Star Destroyer and stuff in the in the sand, and remember yeah. Ray is like scavenging through the Star Destroyer. So you yeah. you actually play the campaign of that battle, which is really neat, and oh, then. And then it jumps forward in the future where it's taking place during episode eight. And then now the next one's probably going to come in. It's probably going to line up with whatever's going to be coming next to the movie. So it kind of fills in some of the blanks and stuff, like adds to the story? Mm -hmm. You're not just playing as the story, or does it add it to it? It doesn't really answer any questions of what takes place oh. in the movies. You do play as Luke at one point after Return of the Jedi, where he goes on this sort of like, sort of a vision quest. Where, uh, where you know that compass that he had? Yeah. So you play him finding that compass. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so, so there's, there, a, there's, there's some, some connection. There's some tie-ins, but it, it's 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 parallel, entirely parallel. So it doesn't one doesn't rely on the other to make sense. During the loading screen, do you play a mini game where you just milk, milk a giant sea walrus for blue milk and spray it in God. your face? Man, that was such a disgusting scene, dude. When I saw that, like, and you know me, I love I love just fucked up shit. Like that's my thing. But I I lost it. <laughs> like when I it, and it wasn't because I couldn't handle that. It. It's just so unexpected. Like yeah. that, that is the last thing I expected. Like they could have literally just like 
like just had like I don't know like porn playing right there, and it would have been no more out of place. Well, I think it was intended to be this cringe factor of showing just how off the grid he's become. <sighs> That's pretty off the grid, man. I mean, the fact that he called a lightsaber a laser sword shows that he truly was just like walked away from everything. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I still laughed at the beginning of the movie when he just grabs it. They made it such a big deal at the end of episode Throws seven, it. episode eight. He just grabs it and just wonks it over the hill. <laughs> You're just like, son of a bitch, man. She damn near died to bring that to you. Uh, spoiler alert if you guys haven't seen it two months ago, whatever. Yeah, if you haven't ago, seen it right it now, it's not a spoiler. I'm sorry. Spoilers Spoilers have a statute of limitations, okay? Mm-hmm. And it ain't coming to DVD because if you're waiting for it to come to DVD, you didn't want to watch it get, watch it hard enough. J, AMD, or Intel in 2018. Oh, I can tell you both have new both have new platforms coming out already in, in uh, let's just say, by springtime. <clears throat> oh, sorry, a little something I threw there. <laughs> I'm getting really confused by the whole Intel AMD thing. They're like, both processors. Ooh, really? <laughs> <laughs> They're both processors. <laughs> No, no, but I'm just saying it's still weird. I still can't wrap my mind around the, the whole, like, uh, uh, it's it's Intel and AMD, right, that are, like, working together. It's like an AMD. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Intel, Intel CPU with an AMD, um, like, a, a shaved down Vega a, a GPU. Like, who who got drunk in a meeting? and make, I still don't understand, like, how that happened. Like, it's Intel. It's and easy. AMD's mortal it's easy. Enemies. It's easy. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's exactly what it is. Fucking apparently. They, like, they. Swear. Intel wanted to, Intel, from all the rumors that are credible that I've heard back in like 2010, 2011. Yeah. In, Intel tried to acquire NVIDIA to become a graphics division for Intel. I, I heard about that. Jensen Wang was basically like, fuck you, gave the double deuces. Yep. And Intel basically at that point was like, we vow to destroy you. And of course they don't have the ability to. Well, not only that, but they worked like side by side with them for years. When I worked at Microsoft, the NVIDIA and Intel team were like in each other's like lap dancing each other over shit. Yeah, but remember, we we're talking about the leaders, the, the the guys at the helm that were having this discussion, not the, not the grunts, right? Okay, so the enough. grunts have to work together. But anyway, it, Intel and, and AMD have basically teamed up to do everything they can to cut the market share that NVIDIA currently has. And that's the, they're trying to do it based on APU because it's just... Everyone knows Intel's mobile CPUs were significantly better than AMD, anything AMD had to offer leading up to Ryzen. I agree. The, and, I, and I would still say that applies today. And before you guys get mad at me and be like, what about the Ryzen mobile? It's literally a desktop chip put in there. I have one sitting over there. So it's still not a mobile chip, right? Yeah. So if you want to make an ultra thin form factor, you use Intel. But Intel doesn't know how to make graphics to save their life. Their life. Iris graphics? Come on, give me a break. So well, what like do you do? Book. You like your Surface Book, right? I love my Surface Book, but I know I can't do anything on it but some some light office work and browse the internet. <laughs> like, dude, MS Paint stresses that. <laughs> like, Remember when you so tried bad. to stream from yours when you were here? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, like it froze up. Like, yeah, it's weird. But I never, but I didn't buy it intending to do that. So, but anyway, my point is, what if you could have a Microsoft Surface that has the power of like a GTX 1070 in it? That'd be pretty badass. Yeah. So it's going to have Vega graphics and APU, ultra thin, fa thin form factor, ultra light um, power needs. That's designing to that's intended to try and cut into the NVIDIA mobile market because NVIDIA dominates the mobile market, right? Yeah, I, I'm not looking forward to having to wear oven mitts though to operate it. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what to expect on temperatures, honestly. <laughs> Actually, that's that's my biggest complaint. I've been playing with this little Razer phone right here, mm. and it gets so fucking hot. Yeah. Oh my god, it's it's all metal, right? The whole thing is just a giant heat sink. I was last night I was playing a game that actually the graphics on it are even better than the Nintendo Switch on some of the games. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sitting there playing 120 hertz whatever. I'm like this is awesome and it made my hand actually uncomfortably warm. Right. So, but but it's it's actually a pretty pretty neat little phone, but you could tell they were just going to like set some records and they really dropped the ball on some other shit. But I will be reviewing that shortly. Well, it's time to go, sir. Any final yes. thoughts? Um, I'm surprised we had so many viewers in here, and the like to dislike ratio is actually quite high for a live stream. I'm proud of you guys. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I didn't expect any of this, honestly. That's for for coming back after such a long time and everything. I didn't think that we we're gonna have that many people just jumping in here. Yep. So anyway, a lot of people, a lot of people were asking like, where the hell did Tech Talk go? <laughs> but uh, it was just bad timing when we brought it back because of the holidays. But we're back. It's 2018. Yep. And, uh, still doing it. Everybody, every, every time we stop doing it, I still get the same messages from everybody in the same comments on the videos and everything. He's like, oh, man, Jay dumped you off TikTok. Jay's <laughs> not doing TikTok anymore. Jay... No, I'm back. I'm back. He's got to be seen on the internet somewhere. All his other friends lost, all, lost a bunch of weight, so he needs a fat friend. He's got to be seen somewhere on the internet, guys. That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> you should say 99 little bugs in the code, 99 little bugs, take one down, pass it around, 117 little bugs in the code. <laughs> and you know this to be true working in IT, my friend. You know that to be true. God, if only people could actually get regression testing down. All right. <laughs> We're gonna go, guys. I got no outro. Sorry, Jerry. You wanna? You wanna? All right, here. I'll, here, I'll do the outro. Hold on. Thanks for watching Tech Talk, episode number whatever the fuck. Cause I can't find the number. Hope you enjoyed it. Come back next week at Thursday, 5 p.m. If Jay doesn't cancel it because he got post Malone, like I don't know, get on his knees or something. I don't know. Post Malone's my new friend, replacing Barnacles. <laughs>